Hey, thanks for joining the CTO Advisor here at Dell Technologies World 2019. Beautiful, but not so sunny Las Vegas. It's, uh, we have a little thunderstorm going on in Vegas. It's first time for me. I have Mike Stanley. Stan Mike, what's your title over at the University of Tennessee Agriculture? I'm an IT administrator. Institute of uh, Agriculture. So big, big announcements today at Dell Tech World. And we're gonna focus a little bit on the end user experience. I know your roots are, you don't do in, uh, EUC to anymore, but your roots are on EUC. How did I know that? Because we've been friends on social media for what, about three years now? Yeah, about that. About three years now, we've never met in person. So thanks for joining the CTO dose. What do you think of the announcements today around EUC? So, you know, it's a, a lot. Workspace Unity was, Workspace One, Unity. I didn't get the whole gist of it, but what did you get from the announcements? I, I didn't get the whole gist either, other than the fact that they're partnering with Microsoft, uh, and I'm really interested in that. Um, I, I, I attended a Microsoft Ignite last fall, and they talked about uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, which I think is what they called it. Um, it's a neat product. Uh, I. Unfortunately, I think it has limited value in my scenario, uh -huh. uh, my environment, partly because of cost. We're, uh, we're a state-funded institution, <laughs> so we don't, we don't have all the money that a lot of these uh, private companies have to throw around on technology. Uh, also, just because of, frankly, uh, IT staffing uh, that's probably required for it, uh, and um, maybe some uniqueness to our environment. So today was all about kind of alleviating some of those challenges. One of which I think you, you guys have, which is overworked staff for too many resources. Right before we started recording, you were telling me, give me kind of the lay of the land. How, how big is the organization? We're about 2,500 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we're headquartered on the uh, University of Tennessee Knoxville campus, um, but we, we have about 115 locations across the state. Uh, we're composed of four units. We're UT Extension, uh, UT Ag Research, the Herbert College of Agriculture, and the uh, UT College of Veterinary Medicine. Uh, we're in all 95 counties. We have 10 major research centers across the state. Uh, uh, we have four 4-H camps. That's part of UT Extension. Uh, we're essentially a distributed, enormous environment that, that tries to provide services the way an enterprise would. Right. But but we're, we're actually composed of, I, I would call it a lot of small business remote office locations. Wow, that is quite the challenge. So anywhere from connectivity to just lo logistics, I would imagine some of these places are, are some of these offices are in remote lo offices. What did you hear? You commented, you sent out a tweet about a Dell VP made a comment in one of the sessions that you're in. What was interesting about the comment? He, the session was about focusing on the end user experience as a method to recruit and retain uh, outstanding talent. Hmm. All of these uh, companies, Dell was represented, was represented both as a, a, an employer of, of people as well as uh, McLaren, the Formula One racing company, and uh, a company called Lyft Academy, which trains uh, pilots. And they were all talking about how they see IT as a way to differentiate themselves uh, from their competitors so that they can draw on the uh, workforce and hire talented people. Uh, what the VP from Dell said was that they focus on their day one experience. They want their new employees to be able to hit the ground running immediately on their first day to be useful. And, and I'll be honest with you, I don't really support users on day one or even day 100. I'm not really into end user support, but I know being an employee of the university that uh, that's one of the areas where we stumble. Uh, I mean, I find, I find users who are uh, three, four days, even a weekend, who maybe haven't uh, been able to check their email yet or, or aren't sure how to deal with payroll issues and things like that. And at, a, at an institution as large as the university, because our employees are university employees as well, uh, I think that's a huge challenge. But what, what this VP at Dell did was really fo talk about focusing on the technology side of it, making sure that they had, each employee had a device that was appropriate for them, uh, 
the right screen size, the right amount of power, but also that it just worked from day one uh, because they really wanted to impress upon the employees how valued they were and how much they, they could contribute even from day one. So let's talk about change from a technology perspective. What have you learned, whether it's at this show or over the, over the past few months, just watching the industry, how has the industry enabled you, whether it's Dell Technologies, VMware, or even competitors? How has the industry enabled you to basically do more with less and change your platforms? Um, at the university, at least, it, it's actually possible to spend your entire career as a system administrator and never have to worry about the network. Right. You know, we had a network team to take care of the network. I knew enough about the network to get my servers on the network to know that they, you know, this part of the farm might have to be on this VLAN or that VLAN, but I didn't have to touch anything. I just had to ask for help in that area. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was actually asked to pivot in my career to learn about networking and to help build a statewide uh, network, uh, a statewide uh, VPN infrastructure and do a complete network refresh at all 115 of our locations. Easy speed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and this is someone who, you know, I'm, I'm a Mac user by preference. I prefer to live on my Mac. Uh, I actually am quite comfortable at the terminal, which, which ended up helping me a lot as I moved into programming switches or configuring them. And um, what Dell helped us with was taking me from someone who only understood networking at the abstraction level, uh, maybe even a little more at the virtualization level because I'd played with vSphere, helped to build some of it on campus, had to know enough of it to, to program a vSwitch to configure it properly. But um, they took me from that point to what I'd like to call now is, I, I, I'm not a network engineer, but I play one on TV. All right. And I can speak the lingo, I can ask for help in areas that I don't understand it, but I can also help my regional uh, IT administrators uh, fix things when something goes wrong. So um, that, that's what I would say, and, and what I learned from Dell, you know, I'd heard this for years, that Dell was a company that could deliver an entire solution, that they could help you with everything. And, you know, frankly, I'm, as an IT administrator, as an IT guy, I've kind of learned reflexively to not trust salespeople mm -hmm. when they say things like that. You probably shouldn't. Um, but they really delivered here in a way that just blew me away. They, they brought best of breed products to the table for us. Uh, we built a solution that was best built on uh, SonicWall firewalls, which were part of Dell at that time. Of course, they're not now. Um, our switching is a Dell N-Series, I think they call it their campus line. Right. Um, we also use their X-Series out at some of our smaller locations or where we have dormitory type situations. Uh, and we used AeroHive for wireless. Uh, we could have used, if we jumped in a little bit earlier, because this was around the time, it was a little bit after HP bought Aruba. So at that, during that time period, Dell was an enormous reseller of Aruba. But uh, we didn't want to go with Aruba, even though Dell would have happily sold it to us, because we had prior experience with AeroHive. Mm -hmm. They put all of that together. They arranged everything, brought us in for training at their center in, in Nashville, brought SonicWall and AeroHive and uh, Dell networking engineers together to give us kind of a boot camp in how to deploy our solution. They helped us architect it. It was phenomenal. Uh, one of our sales engineers, and, and I know the difference between a sales engineer and a post-sale engineer because I used to be a post-sale engineer who kind of moonlighted on the sales engineering side, but our sales engineer, he's a little older than me, he's probably got 30 plus years networking experience, he was available any time I had a question hmm. to call on, to help me with a config, uh, they, they've just been phenomenal partners. So. Let's wrap up with one last question. I had the VMUG uh, board president on right before you. And one of the things that I talked about is the development of relationship between v VMware and Dell. The, we've both been around the industry in a long time. We've both been part of the V community for a long time. VMware has always been viewed as that kind of independent thing, even when EMC bought them. The Dell and uh, VMware have gotten a lot closer over the past couple of years. 
versus Dell and EMC from a customer perspective? How do you view that tightening of the relationship? Has it benefited you as a customer? You know, I don't know that it's benefited me as a customer because, frankly, I'm, I'm a delighted customer of uh, virtualization as a service from right. central IT. I no longer have to run vSphere myself. What I can tell you, though, is I believed very strongly back when I was part of central IT that we would move away from vSphere because hmm. we're very cost conscious. Right. Uh, as Hyper-V came into being uh, through those rough first few years, and then got better and better and better. And I think it's a great product today. I sincerely believed that uh, Central IT would transition away from vSphere to Hyper-V, and it's not happened. Hmm. And I'm glad it hasn't happened because frankly, uh, when I think about all of the VMs that our Central IT guys have to run, I'm glad that it's on a rock solid platform. Um, I don't, as a customer who makes use of, of services that VMware delivers through our central IT folks, I'm, I'm happy that Dell and EMC have gotten even tighter. Hmm. Uh, we, we actually built several years ago, what would this have been, 2011, we, at one time we deployed what was, uh, at that point, the largest public sector flex pod in the country. Uh, a lot of, uh, EM, uh, a lot of uh, NetApp storage, uh, Cisco UCS uh, blades. We loved it. I blogged about it extensively. It was a great product. That's all gone. Uh, all of the Cisco UCS has gone out of their data center. It's all Dell servers now wow. uh, running vSphere. Uh, and I, I think the partnership is good. I think the tighter they integrate, the better. But I think that I saw this on Twitter. Somebody mentioned it today. Um, one of the things that helped VMware grow was that it was allowed to, to be agnostic hardware-wise. And I think that there's nothing wrong with Dell integrating as tightly as possible with VMware, but they need to always let it work everywhere. Hmm. I, I, I think on that note, that's a good place to end. It is an interesting period of change in the industry. VMware Dell closing up as a result, you know, my argument is that, you know, as a result, Nutanix and HPE have now become cozier. Uh, that VMware HPE relationship is is interesting because HPE is one of the largest sell resellers of vSphere. But from a customer perspective, I, I can't I can't argue with customers. They seem to really like the level of support, the level of collaboration, the solutions coming to market from VMware and Dell combined, while VMware still maintains their traditional relationships with the NetApps and the Cisco's and the HPE's of the world. Mike, you blog a lot, or you tweet a lot. I don't know, if you, do you still blog? Not as much as I used to, but I need to get back into it. So you tweet a lot. People can find you on Twitter as? At Mike Stanley. That's really easy. Yeah, well, when you're a nerd and you hear about uh, new services, you join them early, so you get your name. 2006, 2007? I joined in early 2007. All right, I joined not. I could have got Keith Townsend, and I didn't. I got something else, and here we are today. You can find me at CTO Advisor on Twitter. You can find the blog, thectoadvisor.com. Talk to you next CTO Dose.